I guess I don't know if I was there. I wasn't there for it, actually. Mm-hmm. So. We'll just blame my dad. Oh, well, we... <laughs> <laughs> okay. He's, he oversaw. He supervised. Uh-huh. Yeah. Or if somebody else was there, Pat. It was definitely Pat's fault. <laughs> yeah. And we're back. <laughs> Damn it, mm. I didn't do a wardrobe change. Fuck. Mm, I did. And it's back. Because I shaved my mustache. You so, saved, I put, so I have a new t-shirt on. Shave, shave to the mustache. Yeah, I'm not sure how you would say that. You look so different and I look the same. <laughs> yeah, I changed my shirt and my facial hair. <laughs> wow. <laughs> what little there is. Yeah, well. Yeah, uh, so this is airing. Uh, yesterday would have been Labor Day. Uh-huh. So it's the 7th of September. Yeah, a little different. Yo, uh, hopefully we've posted pictures to Instagram of us with dead mule deer by now. Might have some on the ground. That's the plan at least. Um, but we had a conversation this morning uh, with Sean Luckdell from Harlem Bowhunter. So mm-hmm. you, you probably listened to that podcast last week. Man, it's nice to just be you and me for once. Just, just the yeah. two of us. No homo, it's, yeah. <laughs> Back to where we started. Just the two of us. So and Colton, Colton. Oh, Colton, yeah. <laughs> the third wheel. In it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we get the other Colton down, packing, kind of getting ready. Mm-hmm. This is just. Uh, I don't even know if you call this a real podcast. This is just kind of us uh, going to talk through our, our plans, our ideas for this upcoming trip, and mm-hmm. more so for us, I guess, to make sure we kind of have a game plan than than anything. Yeah, and truthfully, it's because uh, we need a podcast because we're hunting right now. That's also true. We are in the Dakota, North Dakota specifically, uh, trying to kill mule deer or have killed mule deer. That's the crazy thing. We're literally talking to ourselves in the future. Yeah. It's always weird to to have that happen when like we, because there's a couple day lag from when we film these mm-hmm. and then we'll go out and do stuff and then we'll release the episode or the, the podcast and we're like, eh, yep, see, yeah. that actually happened. That happened. That, that actually happened. happened. So if all of all's been according to plan we potentially could have a pronghorn uh multiple south dakota muleys and maybe (laughs) north dakota muleys by the 7th of september and if we don't we only have one day left to do it yeah that's right listen to this on the evening of the 7th tomorrow's our last day of hunting so what is the uh what is the end all say all date it's wednesday night would be the The latest that we leave Mm -hmm. wednesday okay so yeah if you're listening to this we have basically 24 hours to kill mule deer in north dakota so how many days we have total is it eight days of hunting i think we figured out yes first second third fourth eighth. fifth sixth seventh eighth yeah see usually you're the math guy <laughs> i figured that one out <laughs> i'm not good with that when somebody says oh i'll be there from the first to the 15th i'm like is that 15 days or six all right so we got basically eight days of hunting and two full days of travel mm. one at the beginning one at the end mm-hmm. and a little bit in between because we're covering two states um, and several pieces of property. I think from like the furthest south in South Dakota that we're hunting to the furthest north in North Dakota that I'd consider going is what do we got? Four Two, hours. Four. Furthest south to the furthest north? I eh, know, probably three Three-ish. hours. Three ish. It's about two and a half hours from our lease in South Dakota to our camping site in North Dakota. Okay. So you buffer that out a little bit. So, and I. <laughs> Let's just, I guess do you just want to kind of like talk from start to finish, like how we're sure. thinking you want to do this? and Yep. So, uh, again, if you're listening to this on September 7th, we left. Today's, on, today's the 26th. 26th of August. Yep. August. We're leaving on the 30th of Which is next August. Monday. Yep. In the afternoon, probably around 4 o'clock or so. Um, we have approximately a 25-hour drive, I believe. Okay. To South Dakota, mm-hmm. of which I think at 23 hours ish is when we're going to pick up our camper. So mm-hmm. we are not pulling a camper across the country for anyone who does it. That seems kind of crazy. Mm-hmm. There's we, a lesson in that. There just, is. A just use your head and don't buy, don't rent a camper where you live. Rent mm-hmm. the camper where you're going. Yeah, and I can understand it. I guess if you own one to utilize it, but man, even, even then, dude. that's rough. So yeah. we're driving 23 of the 25 hours picking up a camper and then finishing two hour drive to our campsite yep. and lease. I have, I have confirmed by the way, I've finished the paperwork for that camper rental. 
Um, last year we just did a straight A frame, but because we got four guys this year, we're doing like a 27 foot Jayco mm -hmm. pull behind. A little big one. And for like an extra hundred bucks, it, it comes with like uh, all the stuff. So all we got stuff. coffee pot in there, mm -hmm. silverware, um, paperware. Yep. Um, there's cooking stuff in it too. So maybe we'll run through the list too and kind of check it against what we're planning yep. on packing here. Yeah, last year we took that little A-frame, which was nice for two people, and we also pulled it with the the new Ford Ranger. <laughs> this year we're taking an F-250. <laughs> My freaking Ford Ranger, yeah. Yeah, this year we're taking an F-250 to pull the big dog. Yeah, that's so, the and a lot more cab space in there for four people too. Yep, and uh, <laughs> we will have the Rogue Ridge bikes on the back yep. as well. Hopefully we don't drag one on the highway like I did in Kansas last year. Mm -hmm. We'll try to avoid that. I'll, I'll be doing the strapping of down of the bikes mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yep that sounds good uh <laughs> it's ratchets not cinches that's the key no dude the, the <laughs> key is it takes two straps per bike it takes two to tango yeah that too you can't what you did last year is you threw that strap over the middle no, of no, the no. bike had nothing to do with that yeah it did it simply because there was no way to keep it like this no it was the shocks that were <laughs> bouncing the and shocks. then the cinch wouldn't hold versus a ratchet, which that bike's not having any shock absorption. I thought that uh, you threw one strap over the top of like the 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 whatever the nutcracker on the bike, mm -hmm. and because of that, it was able to like move within, no, that, see, as the, opposed to two individual anchor. The points. The front was fine. It was the back that dropped down because it was a. They gave you so when we bought the yeah. whatever the dual bike mount thing yeah they gave you two ratchets and two cinch straps you need four ratchet straps per bike two per bike okay so you had a ratchet on one side of the bike and then you had a cinch on the other side well th when the bike bounces the shock would let loose and then push up well that cinch would pull you know what i'm talking about from a cinch instead of a ratchet yeah so it would it would essentially bounce and it would loosen and then bounce back up and it would pull it a little looser. So it eventually leaned versus a ratchet, which that thing's not moving at all. I guess I don't know if I was there. I wasn't there for it, actually. Mm -hmm. so. We'll just blame my dad. Oh, well, we... <laughs> <laughs> okay. He's, he oversaw. He supervised. Uh-huh. Yeah. Or well, somebody else was there. Pat. <laughs> That's definitely Pat's fault. <laughs> yeah. Definitely Pat's fault. Either way. At least it was your bike and not mine. <laughs> <laughs> that's the first thing I looked at. I was like, whose bike is ground down here? <laughs> so anyways, we'll have two bikes, two rogues on the back. Uh, those, I don't know, man. I'm kind of excited about having those to be able to think about back last year when we're like, man, I'd love to go here. Well, yeah, let's buzz up there in 10 minutes with a bike versus two hour hike. Yeah, yeah got to have it. Especially if we're going to, if we are going to separate at any point, it would be nice for the two people without the truck to have mm -hmm. the bikes. Oh, see, I thought I was just going to make Colton walk, and then I was going to bike out to an area. Yeah. <laughs> okay, you guys walk. We're going to drive the truck to this spot, then take the bikes out a little further. Are you here yet? <laughs> uh, yeah. No, so that that's the plan. Um, we do have the F-250 this year and a cap, so we have a lot of room space, which we've got four of us instead of two of us, so that, that'll be a big difference uh, as compared to last year. Yeah, it's a fun road trip, too. The way out there is always, like, anticipated patient is high it is long i, I mean the number of and we're driving west which is nice we're gaining time we talked to a lot of people and they're like so like what are you oh, you're driving like that's crazy i talked to a guy just like 10 minutes ago he's like oh where are you flying in i was like no no, no. we're driving <laughs> yeah it's hard to fly with uh sawzalls and knives and yeah lighters i mean and bows it and is it is rough don't get me wrong like i mean the anticipation is good getting there uh it's the, the drive home's rough yeah it is. Um, but ultimately, I think that... It's, you know what? It's part of the excitement, though. Like, I think about this a lot. Like, if we if we lived in the Badlands and it was just like, all right, guys, time's finally here. Like, let's fun. head out the back door and go do that. Like, it would still be fun, but the, the adventure is not nearly what it mm -hmm. is with, with us here. I could accept the adventure halfway. Yeah, maybe than halfway. It, than maybe it is halfway. Now. There is something to it, though, that's like the further away it is, like the more oh, yeah. mystical it is. Well, I think we, we will appreciate it more. We'll hunt harder when we're there because, I mean, we we will literally be driving for a full day uh, yeah. straight through. There will be no stopping overnight. Well, dude, if you think about it, our, our entire mule deer careers combined uh, is like less than two days. Two days, two, three days. You know, and we were fortunate to get on them early last year, but I'm, you know, I hope not overly confident, but I'm I'm feeling pretty good about our odds with eight full days potentially if we need it to. Mm -hmm. I mean, we got four tags to push five if you count the pronghorn. 
Yeah, it'll be exciting. Weather looks good. We started finally looks getting really good. some rain out there. It's still going to be hot the first couple of days, and then it looks like there's a front that pushes through, not with rain, but drops the temperature about 10 degrees or so. So upper 70s. Just I mean, just comfortable, like nice, hot, hopefully sunny. Th- the know, key is sun to keep those mule deer buck yeah. uh, wanting to be in the shade. I'm really curious what um, if there's going to be any wildfire smoke where we're at. Mm, I haven't seen any wild. F- I'm sure there is just drifting from the Dakota or from Monta- Colorado. Seems Montana. like a lot of those fires are in like western Montana. Yeah, I mean we've got a ton of rain in South Dakota, a little bit in North Dakota. When you say a ton, like a couple qu- quarter inch, like quarter inch. <laughs> yeah, for them that's like more than they've gotten <laughs> the last seven months. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. I know. I don't know. And I think a, an excitement about it too is when we talk about South Dakota is like we really don't know what we're getting into. Um, you know, I've been trying to watch some stuff, and man, the more and more I see it, the more it almost seems like it would be better than North Dakota. And we obviously know North Dakota was is good. Mm-hmm. Um, because it's just the the mule deer are more concentrated in north or in south dakota than they are north dakota there's a larger home range area of of Bad mule deer yeah mule deer. and yeah but like in south dakota it's like here yeah here it is yeah so i don't know um hopefully hopefully some of the land that we have to hunt is within that within that range <laughs> yeah, that would be beneficial and then again i mean we talk <clears> about this we we both have any deer tags in both states so that like listen we see a big white tail we're gonna kill that son of a bitch 100 percent there's part of me that's like, I mean, how cool would it be to go out for a mule deer hunt and come back with like a 160 inch wide tail, full velvet? That'd be pretty cool. Yeah, there is. There's still something about white tail that are like, like we're going out there for the intention of mule deer. Like it's mule deer country. That's what I want to hunt while we're out there. But I think the reality is like, what you know, we come from a white tail background, and mm-hmm. like they are, they're spookier. I think they're a little harder to kill. Oh, and so if we were to go agree. out and do that, like, it, 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 I'm, we're certainly not going to pass any white tails. Oh, it'd be, any really it'd be nice cool as hell to be on the ground in some of these ditches and kill a big ass oh, white tail. Can you imagine? From ground level. You get out in one of, one of Sydney's ditches there and mm-hmm. have a nice 160 inch white tail walk up there. That would be something. So I think the excitement too is like those first day or so in both states <laughs> to just get eyes on them and know what we're into. Like we found that out pretty quick on the second day in, in North Dakota last year when it was like, there's a big buck, there's a big buck. Oh, yeah. here's a bunch of big bucks down in these alfalfa bottoms. Like we knew that the potential to kill a big deer was there though. I think our expectations were like, this is the first time we've ever mule deer hunted. If we could spot and stock mule deer and kill one with a bow, like that's a huge accomplishment on public. I think this year we'll be interested to see, like, especially South Dakota, like, what's the potential? Like, if we, I don't want to go in there, roll in there thinking we're going to see 160 to 180 inch muleys. I do have that expectation in North Dakota because we've seen them. Yeah, and it's cool that we've kind of got a, like, a a stacked trip and that South Dakota, we're essentially where we were at with North Dakota last year and that it's brand new. We don't know what to expect. Our strategy will be kind of... um, general just trying to figure out where they're at initially but then we get to finish the trip with something we're a little more confident in we've had success with before Mm -hmm. um so we'll get kind of like a dual aspect to this trip Mm -hmm. yeah i i think it'll be um man uh, knowing what we know now about north dakota and some of the deer that we saw last year and it it almost feels feels like a blur because it did happen fast we got in the day before we scouted not the wrong, but let's just say not the right area necessarily the first night. Mm -hmm. And then really it was into the season and we were in them and stayed on the same deer relatively in the same area. And I mean, the amount of bucks and big bucks that we saw was crazy given we maybe couldn't have hunted them as well last year because of the access that we had this year. Frankly, we have access to where these big bucks could be. Yeah. Um, I'm curious how it would have unfolded last year. Like so, so many like, just ways it could have gone differently like had you killed that buck you know right away Mm -hmm. you know or if not had you maybe like decide like this year i think you'll probably decide to pass on the Mm -hmm. deer like you shot last year for sure like and and we're switching back and forth every time so it's like we have Mm -hmm. uh you know, if any one of those didn't happen, like our roles might've been reversed. Like you might've shot the buck that I shot and like, well, we even talked about it this year, like the, this 
huge wheat field that we consistently saw giant bucks in, right? Like if we get access to that field, there's literally a single tree in that field that you potentially could climb up in and kill a buck out of, a big, big buck out of. Or you could uh, basically bury yourselves along one of the ditches that come up out of the river bottom into that field. Which is what I would be and, leaning towards. And probably kill a big buck. And, and so thinking about that, yeah, it makes it hard. Now, the whole opposite uh, and not being negative about it is like, what if like we get out there and it's not nearly like it was last year? Maybe last year was the fluke. I don't know. Yeah. You know, and so then all of a sudden it's like, well, no, we do have to hike a mile into these drainages and get into this stuff. They're not just coming into these ag. I doubt that's how it is. I feel like it's going to be very similar to like it was, but maybe. And so then it, it starts to say like, you know, instead of like, us being on stocks almost every other hour, like now we're working it, do we end up having to split up, you yeah. know? And, and like, there's just so many things and maybe that's how South Dakota is and North Dakota is like it was last year. It's just, it's going to be really interesting to see what we can get into. And again, you know, talking to ourselves in the future here, people listening to this may already be like, yeah, you idiot. You guys have already killed three bucks. They're on the ground. I just saw them on Instagram. Yeah. I hope so. I hope so. Yeah. You know, but like we can't, I'm very confident about our strategies going into this, um, but it's not going to be easy. Like, yeah, it, it, I, I almost think that, uh, and it was funny to see Sean's reaction this morning. I think that we have a little bit of ignorance working in our favor. Sure. And that, uh, you know, th think about hunting whitetails now that we're just a little more familiar with. There's things that like we would never do that, uh, cause just cause we, oh, 100%. Cause, cause we know better, you know, but like, dude, we know for a fact. That like, when I told him how I ran at that deer last year, he was like, are you serious? He's like, that worked. He's like, you weren't over with Jeremy? Like, 50? No, like. Yeah, and I was like, I don't know. I didn't know any better. I just, and I killed the thing. And I think part of that is even, like, we know where these deer are laying in this river bottom, and there is a drainage that comes right up out of that river bottom and goes into this wheat field. And if you set up appropriately with enough cover, you're going to get a shot at a big muley. And yeah. maybe even a big whitetail. It's one of the things I like about mule deer hunting so much is it's it's hard to overthink. Like it's just mm -hmm. there's a lot more uh, just hunting instinct that seems to kick in. It's just like animals there. I'm here. How do I get to it? And how do I how do I shoot it? And I think that's the excitement of like and it, maybe it is with some even these whitetail hunts out of state, but these out of state hunts like I know back home or Kentucky or even Ohio. We're going to hunt those places for a full season. And so we're very conservative on yeah. those approaches. We're out there. It's yeah. like, dude, we got <clears throat> four days in South Dakota, Make four days happen. in North Dakota. You bring the action to it and go. Make it happen. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and are you going to blow some of them? For sure. It's absolutely going to happen. But you're also going to be in the game as much as you possibly can. I mean, last year from sun up to sundown during the open season, we were on deer or strategizing and making moves on deer. Yeah. You know, and, and that's, uh, I think part of, you know, to our credit, maybe to, like you said, a little bit of ignorance there. Like we were successful because we were aggressive as hell. Yeah. Well, let's bounce back a little bit. So we're going to leave here on the 30th next mm -hmm. Monday. It'll take us t t roughly 25 hours, but we'll gain two hours on the way there. So we should roll in roughly around three or four o'clock. Yeah. With stops three or four. Mm -hmm. With stops. Um, and that would be to our lease. So we've got a, a lease in South Dakota with camper hookups. Mm -hmm. And so that's going to be our home base to start. Yeah, it, we'll probably get to lease, I would say, closer to 5, 5.30, probably with the stop and the pickup of the trailer and everything. Okay. So say 5 o'clock. And I would imagine it gets dark there roughly around 8 or 8.30. Uh, so that is mountain time. Yeah. It's but it's on the eastern edge of mountain time. So that means it gets dark late. Okay. So how about I, let me just predict it yeah. with my phone. <laughs> Uh, sunset time. Um, yeah, let's see here. Uh, I have the South Dakota here. Sunset is seven forty four with last light at eight sixteen. Okay. So that probably gives us some time to just like literally throw the blocks under the tires, plug the thing in, get the AC rolling, I guess. And uh, what do you want to do that first night? I, I would say that may be determined by what the landowner says. I would say what the landowner says. And I want to call him, I don't know if I call him Monday when we leave or Tuesday. Probably Tuesday. On the Just road. be like, hey, we're going to be coming in this evening. Yeah. You know, do you have time this evening or tomorrow? Okay. Well, see, I hate to burn a potential evening of scouting. 
Unless it's a guarantee. Or you can call him on Monday. No, I think Tuesday's right. I'll call him Tuesday. I'll just say, say hey, hey, we're coming in we're tonight. Rolling. It's, I think because it's it's one of two things. We're we're either. I mean, we're going to scout our place too. Not that said, like if the landowner says, hey, yeah, come and hunt, we'll probably opt to go and scout his place the first evening versus our place. Okay. That would be my guess. Yeah, probably. Um, yeah, I mean, if it's a for sure thing, I would say, all right, cool, let's just commit to his place. If he's not sure or we don't get a hold of him, then we'll scout our place that evening. I'll probably take my bow because I'll have a pronghorn tag. So if we see pronghorn, sure. we'll take the red moo cow. That's a decoy uh, or a shield, and we're going to go and kill pronghorn. Okay. I, w- I would almost consider breaking up that first night. Send one to the west, one to the east. Just because... We we can't really hunt you like you said you can't pronghorn but yeah um, maybe it would make sense just for one of us to get eyes on a on a big one and I think the best chance for a big muley is on that east that northeast corner of the lease yeah so it's and I would probably send you and somebody to that end and then me and somebody to the west to scout that slash have my bow for pronghorn to the western part of the lease. Mm-hmm. What if what if he says yeah come on over? I think we're both on that lease. Okay, yeah, probably. Of which I probably will still up my bow in case we run into pronghorn, yep. but yep. it's more of a we're scouting for deer for the next morning. Do we know that South Dakota just opens up in the morning? We don't have to wait till noon. It's probably worth checking. <laughs> <laughs> in case anybody hasn't listened to the previous ones, Jared and I found out that as we were like pulling out, it was just getting daylight. We were still in the truck that um, one of the residents in North Dakota pulled up to us and said, just being friendly. Yeah. Like he was like, Hey, where are you guys going? And just mm-hmm. chatting with us. You guys know, like you can't start hunting till noon. And we're like, Oh yeah. Okay. Jacking around the, the non-res guys. Okay. We get it. And he's like, no, seriously. We're like, yeah, no, definitely. We know. Yeah, so, for sure. And they looked it up and it was like, Oh shit. Yeah. We can't hunt till noon. So um, let's check on that for the South Dakota. I don't think there is. I think it opens on the first. Okay. Midnight. Well, <laughs> well, maybe between now and then, a conversation with the landowner will ma- make our decision as far as how we're going to treat that first night and mm-hmm. probably the following morning. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, and I, I think that the plan I'm is... I'm trying to find a way to do that without, like, with, just, without, um, without burning scouting time. Like, dude, what if we could go scout private or scout our lease and then, like, after dark, go hook up with them or something? That's fine. Yeah, and we could just well, start. So, we could just start hunting slash scouting in the morning. First thing in the morning, we'll just give him the give him the space. benefit of the doubt. Tell him, tell uh, let him tell us when he's ready for us to come over. Okay, when are you ready for us to come? Kill no these? means yes. <laughs> we're gonna come kill these mule deer now. So worst case scenario too, which isn't that bad. Um, if, he, if he says, "Hey, just not not this year. I've got hunters and stuff." Um, we'll just stick to the lease. Stick to the lease, of which, like, we're really going to give it a solid run on the first and Night. probably the... M- the evening we get there, yep. if that's the case, and the following morning. Yeah, and probably the following evening. Okay. And then it would be the morning of the second, which is the day before and the Even opener. if it doesn't work out, there's another landowner that I want to go chat with. Yep. Midday. Yep. And then we're only two Dirty. hours from our North Dakota lease. Okay. Or North Dakota. Sure about that? Two, two and a half. Yep. I looked it up. Pretty sure about that? 100%. Okay. All right. And so when we leave that, because we don't need to be there any earlier than the evening of the second. In North Dakota? Yep, because we can't start hunting until noon on the third. Yep, that's perfect. It gives us like two full days to kind of figure out South Dakota. Mm-hmm. Um, there is a there's a ranch that I got permission on, but I'm thinking likely not until next, next year, year is the way that it sounds. Um, and that's like looking at a map, it's probably 45 minutes south of the North Dakota yeah, it's on the it's way, like probably. It's, like, in between. So I don't know if you want to hit that, like, uh, just kind of on the way. I would. I think that makes the most sense. Yeah, just whenever we're ready to pull we out. We, like, have a trailer and stuff. Can we just, like, uh, start hunting? Or, <laughs> I mean, the guy was real cool. It was the ranch hen that I talked to. So that's, I mean, for people listening, like, in the meantime, it's not, like, just all of a sudden we've got all these places to go hunt in, in the Dakotas. I've been making phone calls for weeks. Yeah, I mean, weeks and weeks and weeks. I, I think that the one thing that we're, we're committed to is at least the up until probably the morning of the second to be in South Dakota. Okay. And then from there, if, absolutely. If we're not on deer, lease isn't that great. We're going to head north to our campground in North Dakota. Well, we're going to hit, hit the his, ranch on the way yep. up. And then head to North Dakota and start scouting for basically a day before we can start hunting in North Dakota. Throw something out there. 
what if we find like a 200 inch muley on ground we can hunt in south dakota we're gonna be there trying to kill them just stay we we've had this discussion of we probably won't leave big deer to go kill big deer right um at some point we will right i mean at some point you say hey listen like we've been trying to kill these deer and it's just we're not getting close like getting on them and getting close is one thing but if like we're just not we know that we can get close to these deer yeah we'll know yeah i know we just pull the trigger you know and yeah yeah. so i i think we're giving ourselves at max through the third right or through the third is the opener in north dakota i think we're giving ourselves through the opener in north dakota before if we're on deer in south dakota Mm -hmm. sure and then, like the fourth, maybe after the morning hunt in South Dakota on the fourth, we would switch to get there. For well, the how did we break hunt. it down? If you do literally half and half, which doesn't have be to be 31st, that. 31st, first, second, no, no, no. third. Start with the first. Oh, first, One, two, second, three, third, fourth in North Dakota. So we'd South roll in Dakota. on the third day of season, technically. Yeah. And then fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth in North Dakota. Yep. So, yeah, I don't know, man. It, it's so crazy because. We're basing it off of we're basing it off of North Dakota, and we're basing it off of last year's success, which was f- pretty rapid. I don't know, you know. Just throwing this out there, I don't necessarily want to do this. We could start in North Dakota. No, we can't. South, sorry, South Dakota. Mm-hmm. Go hit the opener in North Dakota. Mm-hmm. Tag out in two days and come back, and then come back. Mm-hmm. Very possible. Because we have to drive back down through there anyways to drop the camper off. We do. Which begs the question. Should we just stop and hit that ranch on the way back? Well, it'll be late because we're going to plan on hunting all day. The, again, if we're not tagged out, we're hunting until dark on Wednesday and then loading up and coming back. Okay. Because um, we're going to drop that trailer off in like the middle just of the night. Just at dark. Okay. Yeah. 10 o'clock or 11. We'll have to talk to the guy when we pick the trailer. Okay. Up. Yep. Yep. Good call. Yeah. And because more than likely we'll be driving north midday. Yep. Midday. Yep. To be there the evening of either the second. Yeah, we want to try to get there for like three o'clock, and that gives us the whole evening to scout. Okay. So either way, it'll be a midday pickup and leave South Dakota, Dakota to go to the north. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah, I, I don't know, man. It, it's uh, it, it would be optimistically, we roll in there, we find deer, or we get on that landowner's piece. We kill bucks by the second, and maybe a pronghorn, and we're pointed north for opening day at Dakotas with... <laughs> Hi, yeah, <laughs> solid man. Um, I just want to give some like context to how we've we've got this far. So like we we did we picked up that lease and um that base camp leasing. So it's a thousand acres for what'd you pay for it? It was actually it's almost twelve hundred acres. Okay, um, six grand, six grand. Mm-hmm. Yeah, not cheap. Um, and so that's like home base and like how many people just said money bags? <laughs> yeah, well, it's not cheap. But we did it for the reason of it was a set. It one, it got us in the door. Well, this I mean, year. Dude, people can go find their own. They're going to find out. I mean, that's yeah. what it costs. Yeah, it, I mean, one, we wanted to hunt South Dakota. We had to have private land. We don't know anybody there. But this got us in the door to start calling people around us. Yep. Yeah. And so, um, literally, what we've done since then is like, all right, we've committed to this this piece. Um, we got the camper rented. Like we're we're going. Um, I, I'll bet you I've called probably 25 or 30 numbers. That's a lot. Uh, that I think I actually like landed on, like got a voicemail mm-hmm. type of deal. Um, I've got calls back from one, two, three, let's call it four or five people. And I think like three of them are, uh, yeah, we'd like to have you out maybe two of those are like next maybe year. not this year because either i've got hunters or the drought situation um and so like said and done three days out from leaving for this trip or whatever we are um we've got a lease of a thousand acres mm-hmm. i've got a potential probable permission for this year on i think thirteen thousand acres yeah i think is what he's got i've got one just to the north of that that I feel like we could probably convince, but may may not be a, until next year, which, which is, is fine. I think he's got four or five thousand acres, and I've got a almost certainly yes for next year on what's what do they have up there? The big one, another 
15, 15,000, another 15,000. So that's, that's the beauty of the Dakotas in South Dakota, anywhere kind mm-hmm. of in, in this area. It seems like if you, you can get permission from one landowner, you know, the right one is, you know, five to 10,000 acres. Yeah. And so that'll be, I mean, again, uh, 1200 acres is nothing to, to bat an eye about. I mean, it's still a big sure. chunk of ground. We know that there's some pronghorn on it. We know there's some deer on it. It only takes one bachelor group. Well, in a year like this too, I mean, we're kind of, we're looking for uh, year round water sources that likely are still holding water, which we have, uh, and also agriculture, because from what we know in North Dakota, it seems like these mule deer herds are still going into the, ag. still tied to, you know, mm-hmm. ag sources in some way. Yeah. I mean, and, and this lease isn't anything that like says, man, like it's a no brainer. Yeah, it's out of not your the best piece of ground. Yeah. But I mean, that doesn't mean that there's not a bachelor group, which is all we need. You, one bachelor group and you'll kill deer on it. Yeah. Um, obviously the landowner pieces and having 13,000 acres or something like that, 5,000 acres is going to, would change the game significantly. Yeah, no doubt. So, yeah, I don't know. I mean, we don't know exactly what we're getting into. Could be big whitetail on there. Yeah. Who yeah. knows, That's what's part of the excitement of this trip is we may get some, like, surprise permission or access that uh, I'm not expecting right now. Yeah, or we pull up on our lease and back by one of these big water holes is a bachelor group holding two giants. Yeah. That's all it takes. Yeah. So, I think, and that's what we talked about Sean, with Sean this morning is like, it seems like he and Mike have really solid strategies of find a bachelor group, know that there's one or two shooters in them and then stick on them. Mm-hmm. You know, don't, you know, make a move, get aggressive. Don't just be cruising, trying to find easier deer, deer to kill necessarily. What's your, uh, what's, what's your, uh, the goal for this year as far as like mm. class, class of animal? Um, so I, I think I'm going to classify them separate because I have, not sure of expectation. First one would be, I want to kill a pronghorn buck. I don't really care. I don't even know how to judge them. Would you leave mule deer to kill a pronghorn? No. Okay. Seriously? All right. Yeah, that was, Come a, on. that was a test. Good job. Yeah, you passed. <laughs> no, I would not leave mule deer to kill. I think it would be cool to kill a speed goat, but like... Yeah, for sure. I don't for, I don't know. Th- this morning, my strategy was sit on a water hole, so I don't know. I think that's changed. I think that's going to take too Well, long. that's because I got the red moo cow now. Will it be here in time? Mm-hmm. You, it was like a Montana decoy. Mm-hmm. Red moot We cow. don't know. We just Googled something. Yeah, just order. some big cow. If anybody, well, no, we'll be out there already. <laughs> They're like, we'd love to know <laughs> yeah. if there's a good strategy for hunting. They're listening hard. to this and be like, uh, yeah, you guys got mauled by a bull because you're carrying that cow thing around. Maybe. Mm, can't milk, milk a bull. Okay, um, so you'd like to kill a pronghorn. Yeah, I'd like to kill a pronghorn. Uh, Any let's, let's check regulations on those because I just want to make sure there's not like a minimum, like has to be two inch Colton, check it something out. or other Colty. pronghorn in south dakota um yeah so then i guess on a buck i don't know i probably it'll depend on if we have access to other land or just our lease that will change a lot yeah. um i i don't want to be that guy that says like i'm going to just like i'm not going to go kill a fork right on our lease just okay. to kill a fork um but i, w- I, I won't judge it. you're allowed to kill a fork yeah I, I wouldn't are you allowed to kill a fork yeah you can uh, it's an any deer. I'd kill a doe if I wanted to. Okay. Um, but I don't necessarily know. So if it's just our lease, I, I mean, I'd like to kill something that's at least three in South Dakota, three years of age. Okay. Um, could that change because we only have our lease and we're seeing a bachelor group of two-year-olds? For sure. I might kill another two-year-old, especially if it's in velvet. Okay. Um, if we get access to neighboring landowners, it'll definitely be at least a three. But again... Until we get eyes on the quality of deer in South Dakota, I don't know. Like, I don't want to try to kill a that's where I'm at. 150 inch four year old if they don't exist. They don't exist. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm going into it with the hopes that we're going to find some mature deer, and like my, my goal would be to just shoot a four year old or older. My my goal animal. in North Dakota is a a 150 or bigger. However, we're still in South Dakota. Okay. However, sorry. Yeah, don't jump ahead. Full back. My fifth grade teacher used to say, "Let me run the class, Mr. Prussia." <laughs> I was like, I just want to know what time lunch is. Uh, if we get out there and we're not seeing any mature animals in South Dakota, yeah, like the best we're seeing is mm-hmm. is two and three year olds. Um, I still, I still will try to refrain from shooting a two year old, but I'd, I'd shoot a similar buck to what I shot last year. Yeah, I dude, I have no problem killing a buck that you killed last year. I think that's a great deer. Yeah, it was. Um, and, and again, uh, we don't, but we don't have anything to necessarily but, compare it to in South Dakota. Yeah, but. If we can, if we find big deer, I, I think both states, I'm going to try to hold out for that four-year-old or older. Yeah, I think that's a great goal. I mean, 
again, if if you put me in a place, if we go into South Dakota and we're glassing and all of a sudden there's a bachelor group and there's two or three, four year old plus bucks, like it's like, okay, cool. That's possible to kill. Yeah. But if you don't see them, can't kill them. Yeah. As far as like a uh, score, I'm not. Yeah. Not real. Just a mature animal. Doesn't matter to me really. It kind of sticks with our whitetail mindset. I mean, in most cases I want to kill a four year old or older buck. Yeah. Whitetail wise. Yeah. Even if I got a crack in North Dakota at a, what looked like a really old, big fork horn. Because he's mature? Mm-hmm. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, I'd probably crack him. For sure. That's what that, that first buck we stocked was kind of working that way. He had... He wasn't real He great. had threes, but no fours, I think. He, oh, I don't he think split. Mule oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But then had no fours. Yeah, that sounds right. None at all? mm hmm. Yeah, but he was heavy. Dude, that, that was a big frame. Big that, frame. That was a 25, 26-inch wide deer. <sighs> Yeah, that was cool. So, yeah, I mean, I think that's that's it in South Dakota is, uh, frankly, I have no frame of reference. Like, if we start seeing mature deer, I'm all, that's what I want to kill. Yeah. Um, but I also would love to get some meat. How about a whitetail? Shoot a three-year-old whitetail out there? Mm, probably not. Unless it's like 150 inch or then I will. Really? <laughs> I'd shoot 100. Yeah, what am I going to do? Let them grow? <laughs> yeah. Well, you can hold off for a mule deer. Oh, Okay. Again, what's there? Because it's either or. What's there? Yeah. That's, yeah, that's, that's where it comes that's, down that's to. That's the tough part about not knowing is like, we don't know what we're going to run into. If I knew, it's like, oh, there's all kind of big bucks. I will say though, dude, I, I mean, I'm. it sounds like they are there. Like from all the landowners I've talked to, they're like, oh yeah, yeah, we got mule deer. You know, a couple guys have shot a couple 170, 180 type. Oh, I, I mean, there, there's definitely, and again, that's it. Just get your eyes on a couple big ones. So yeah, South Dakota, I don't know. It's kind of a wild card for me. I got pronghorn, mule deer. I'd love to kill a four-year-old. If we're not seeing four-year-olds, will we kill a three-year-old? Yes. Okay. Would I kill a three-year-old whitetail over a three-year-old mule deer? No. No. I mean, I, I just want to shoot a mule deer. Well, that's why we're there. I don't believe you. What do you mean? I think if a big three-year-old whitetail walks out. It's because Colty's going to be on my shoulder. Shoot it. Yeah, 100%. Shoot they it. both are going to be. You know they will Shoot be. Shoot it. I'll I'll try to be your voice of reason. If if I happen to be with you when you shoot it, he's gonna be on one. Shoot it! Don't shoot it! Shoot the pr- it! The problem last year is I didn't see the deer. All I could just see you, and you were like, "Dude, I was so one well, forty. And again, like we talked about it, like I was worked up because we bumped those two. Yeah, that yeah, were right it was high us. high because t- I thought everything that was ran it. out of there. Yeah. yeah, we bumped two at thirty yards, and it's like. Like that yeah, was it, yeah. you know, and then I look down and I see velvet like right under my feet and it's like, oh shit. There yeah. Well, dude, and no, no disrespect to your deer last year. That was an awesome first mule deer oh, in yeah. full velvet. I was really stoked that that went down. Double the drop time, two year old giant. Yeah. Yeah. That, that deer would have been a monster at five. Yep. <laughs> hey, it was cool. It was a, it was a yeah. good way to break the ice. Yeah. It was fun as hell, man. I still am impressed. Although I put that shot a little forward, dude, that thing blew his shoulder apart. Yep. Oh, we know how to build arrows now. That annihilated him. That yeah. deer was tough as nails, though. That thing didn't want to die. Yeah, well, you hit him a little forward, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Single lung and cut the top of the heart. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I, I guess that summarizes South Dakota. I don't know. I, I've I don't really you have. Just reminded me, we should have a package of Velvalock getting here. To, to Say it tomorrow. Like he sent it uh, Monday. Okay. I'll did, be here. Tomorrow. Did they come today yet? Uh, UPS didn't. Okay. Or FedEx then. Okay. Um, North Dakota is a different ball game because again, now we're going in with a benchmark of what we know is in that. So area. we'll have to hook the camper back up whenever we decide to leave. Mm-hmm. Rally everything. Mm-hmm. We're gonna stop at the ranch. Put the bikes back in the camper. Stop at the ranch. Cross the border into North Dakota. So mm-hmm. it's just on a whim. I didn't have to do this. I just was feeling like I was having some success calling landowners. So. I just called everybody around the public that we've been hunting. I didn't even think about that, honestly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, and here's something else that happened was we called the campground in town that we stayed at last year. I'm glad you said something because I I probably would have at some point, but that prompted. Well, me they to were just it. so lax of like, yeah, you guys don't really need a reservation. Well, there's nobody there. They're like, yeah, uh, yeah. they were surprised that I called for a reservation last year. They're like, you can just come, come on down here, okay? <laughs> I was like, okay, okay, don't you know? <laughs> and. Uh, her name is Katie. That's mm, the right. the I, she, you, you should have heard her like stuttering over her words because she really wanted to like help us out. You know, when I called her back the second yeah. time, she's like, oh, she's, oh, well, you know, like, I guess I, 
it, do you guys think how like how big is your camper? Could you fit like between? And I was like, hey, I said, don't worry about it. Like, and this is because they have welders. In yeah, town. so they have some kind of energy project going on out there, and all the welders are occupying the spaces. And so, um, in the meantime, I started calling landowners for permission to hunt um, because we saw so many good bucks on private land and stuff. I was like, man, let's see what just see what we can do here. And uh, I, I did end up paying for a, a white pages account is how i got these phone numbers so mm. like i'd go on onyx i'd find the are you expensing that the, the, <laughs> no no but uh now that you mention it receipts are too hard to keep track of man i uh so i where am i at my story here i got white pages you were calling people white pages around calling people. the campground okay so i got a call back from the right one well not the right one but a, a really a good right one. one really good one and uh, he was really cool, and he's like, hey, you know, it sounds, sounds fun. You know, it's cool you guys are driving so far to do this. He's like, yeah, I'd be happy to have you. And he doesn't even live on the property, right? He doesn't. It's his dad's place that has since passed away, and he lives in town, so yep. not far. And um, so he gave us permission, and I started just – I was just talking to him. You know, I started telling him about our camping situation, and he – I showed you the voicemail this morning. He's like, oh, well, hey – He's like, I've actually got, you know, water and electricity hookup. He's like, why don't you guys just stay there? And I tried to, I offered to pay him and stuff. And I was like, we don't expect to hunt for free. And he's like, oh, no. He's like, I'm not that kind of guy. And we'll bring him a good bottle of bourbon. Yeah. So we got our camping situation figured out and access to like, I think he's got 300 acres of private. And um, in doing some research along with that, we found out that you can hunt private land that's not posted either physically or electronically in mm -hmm. North Dakota. So, which uh, for anybody that uses Onyx, there is now yeah, a layer on a layer Onyx. For that. Yep. So and we turn that on. So I'm hoping that some of the property that you know borders some of the stuff we have access to is not posted, and that would give us access to this whole drainage bordering a big wheat field that we saw multiple booners in last year. Booners. Booners. <laughs> yeah. With a B. <laughs> we saw. I, 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 no exaggeration. I bet like 20 or 30 of them. Yeah. I bet there was probably two of those bucks. <laughs> I'm like, we were driving. I was like, Hey, do you see all this? It got to the point where by the end of the trip, we like, we weren't even looking. We're <laughs> like, yeah, there they are. are. There's all the <laughs> We saw two, we saw two of those bucks that I bet were well over 180. Yeah. They were huge. <laughs> like 15 yards from the road. I still kind of can't believe it was real. I don't, I'm not sure. Well, that's what I kept saying. Like when we start thinking about that trip last year, like, and again, it, like I say that because we couldn't hunt those last year. They literally went from private to private. Um, I mean, there's a chance. Uh, maybe I have to call him back today or tomorrow. Like we might get access literally to that field, which would be the golden, golden goose. Yeah, I mean, and we're right bumped up next to it. Doesn't mean that those deer aren't in there somewhere. The advantage though is I've talked to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. I, I kind of have a real good feel on kind of who's out there. You know, I've talked to several of the landowners. I don't know if I told you. I talked to the game warden. Oh, did you? Yeah, I talked to the game warden. Um, Is he in that county? Mm -hmm. Like, okay. Yep. Yeah, he knew. He pulled up Onyx. He was looking at the property with He's me like, and stuff. He's like, oh, yeah, we heard about you Pennsylvania boys. I was asking him about how to access some of these roads and stuff. I, I do actually, there's a, I'll talk about this in just a minute. Remind me to tell you about this. There's a road further north mm -hmm. above Stevens Road. Okay. That I think we can use. Um, so got access on that one place. That's where we're going to camp so that we're going to set up. And there's what, 200 acres right there? At Some least. Of yeah. Two or two three. Or three. Mm -hmm. And it's nice looking drainage. They're very well. I wouldn't be surprised. If we get, and that's where this whole whitetail discussion starts to come in because very well, there could be big, big whitetail in there too. Maybe. Yeah. Very well could kill uh, something right out of that drainage. And so, so got a good place to camp. We know a lot of people in town now and, uh, you know, all, all, uh, lights are green for North Dakota, I think. Mm. Yeah, and we still have our public spots that we're going to go into. We've probably picked out some new spots on the map that we want to try. Man, I'm torn about... So that one landowner sent us a link to the property up north. Yes. One part of me just doesn't want to drive that far. It's probably half hour. Mm -hmm. But the other part of me is saying it looks really good. Mm -hmm. and, th and they said we were good to go, right? It's plots. Oh, it is plots. Mm -hmm. It's not theirs. He just has said, hey, here's a really good track. Hmm. You know, it looks like one of those ones that you would just go and still hunt for a day. Yep. And probably, drainages probably and kill stuff. something. Get on them. Yeah, I mean. The, the, dude, the more we talk about this, too, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Yep. It seems like we're going to end up at some point just breaking up. Yeah, I mean, the only way I don't see us breaking up is if we are 
uber success of uh, successful like last year like literally we're in deer kill in deer kill mm-hmm. of, of which case because if somebody kills first day then they're camera two right there or angle two and comms and stuff like that yeah yeah i guess so can't comms in south dakota so i don't know how we're just camera two at that point um and commentating i guess i guess we hadn't discussed that so how does that work like if if we get into if we get into south dakota and you shoot one Mm -hmm. the second first morning or whatever Mm -hmm. do we just stay for a couple days until i kill one um i mean this is a team effort not leaving well, it would still be a team effort if we, if we picked up and, and went. Yeah, okay. Yeah, because, I right. mean, if you if I kill or you kill, like, we're going to give the other guy ample opportunity till they say, hey, listen, we're not on okay. deer. Yeah, or we'll whatever. treat it the same way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, at some point, one of us is going to look at it and be like, hey, listen, no offense, but, like, we're just not getting on anymore. Deer. Yeah, listen, th- dude, you're just, you're sucking. You're right? sucking. Like, we're going north. <laughs> uh, of which, okay. if we tag out there, we can come back. Yep. Okay, same page. So, <laughs> so that's documented. So when we, when we come back to that? the next one, okay. they'll be like, listen, I don't know why you were fighting me on this. <laughs> okay. So on that road to the east, initially I was thinking about um, trying to take that road up through there. Mm-hmm. And I just don't think that they're going to give us We can't cut the corners it. of those properties. But um, Michael actually told me. The warden, Michael? No, uh, mm. the landowner. Yep. Told me that there's a road just a little further up, there's another private landowner that has it in plots, but that there's a road that cuts back in there pretty far. Hmm. Is that above Dexter's? Uh, no, it's east. Hmm. Yeah, so, you know, know where you're at. there's two main roads. Yep. The road on the right, instead of making that left on the road we want to take, mm-hmm. you go up there maybe another mile. Mm. There's a road, a two-track, that cuts straight up into the plots. Hmm. Gotcha. So it doesn't get us as close to where I killed, but it gets us into that big chunk of public a little better. South of where you killed? South and east? Yes. Mm-hmm. In the like in the big country? Yep. Cool. Yeah, I don't, I don't know, man. For all I know, we could both kill Booners out the back yard at this point on our landowner's place that we're going to be staying with. That would be pretty cool. And what a what a weird deal in that again, let's let's kind of compare the the two North and South Dakota like we're putting out cash for our lease in South Dakota. If we hunt some of these guys, we'll probably pay them some cash too for letting us on there. North Dakota, it's like public land and permission. Yep. No money. Like, There's a lot more public. Well, that's, There's a lot more public. Well, that's the deal. There is plenty of public in South Dakota. You just can't hunt it until October 1. You can't hunt it as a non-resident until October 1st, so it's out. Can I hunt it for antelope? I don't know. I bet I can. Maybe. Put a drive on. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> um, That'll be interesting. Yeah, you might be able to. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, um, I, I'm very confident about the area and how we hunt in North Dakota. That will at least be on deer. You know, ultimately it's up to us to make the shots and stuff. I don't know about South Dakota. I think a lot of it, our lease is a wild card until we get a confirmed yes from the neighboring landowners. Could be a flop. Something else I could also see happening potentially is if if we are broken up and one of our groups spots a deer that's in a stockable spot to call the other group because we're really making a concerted effort to film this year, Mm -hmm. you know, maybe... Yeah, we're going to need to make, yes, we're going to have to sacrifice that kind of stuff. Yeah, maybe just say, hey, we got one. Why don't you come over and meet us, and we're going to make We're going to make a stock. Thing. Yep. Yeah, it's funny how, and do we have such a better idea now uh, than mm-hmm. we did last year? But there's like, there's three possible solutions, <clears throat> and probably more, uh, of how this is going to go down. Like, one and the most ideal is the four, us, four of us watch a buck come off an ag field and go bed down in a ditch, and then the four of us move in, and we have two two points of angle. Uh, the other one would be whether we're broken up or together is we're just still hunting drainages Mm -hmm. and we, you know, we come up on a deer and like we find, find a way to make that film work, you know, whether somebody backs out and around and gets another angle or, or thirdly is what I just said, you know, one of us spots them up and has Mm -hmm. the other one come and get it. it. Yeah. I mean, 
most opportune is that like in the first stock or two, one of us kills, and then you've got the other one kind of tailing as that second angle to film till the, the other one tags out, and then we switch states. What if there's two shooters in a bachelor group, mm. like bedded down under a tree together? I don't know if we. I I have no idea if we can make four work in a stock or three in a stock. That'd be interesting. That'd be a menage a trois of death. <laughs> That'd be crazy. I don't think you'd do that. All right. Well, that's, I mean, that's, yeah. rough, that's roughly the plan as far as like, I think we've laid out how we got permission, you know, what our strategy is roughly for moving back and forth between these different places we have to hunt. Uh, let's, you want to run through just some, uh, like a gear list? Sure. Overall, like I don't have it in front of me, but just kind of some, impor know some important stuff. I mean, the big difference this year is that we've got this, um, what, 27 foot Jayco. Yeah. camper that so we're rent, running. renting a camper is the living situation what was the cost of the camper uh roughly a thousand bucks yep for maybe less nine days seven, seven or eight hundred yeah eight nine days yeah and they're real flexible about like so i actually only have it rented through like the fourth or sixth fifth. or yeah. seventh and i would just confirmed i was like we're cool to add some days he's like oh yeah absolutely yeah so we've got the camper rented. Um, that is coming outfitted with a lot of stuff. First of all, easily sleeps four of us. Easily. Um, Which we need the space because yep. we're going to have to, when we're, it doesn't have a hitch on the back of it. So we're going to have bikes on in the rack rack till we get there. And then the rack and the bikes go in the camper and we pull the camper. Yep. And like you said, it comes fully outfitted with propane, gas wear. grill. Yeah. All the kitchen. There's wear. a shower in it. There's a bathroom. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, this is the big difference between talking about what most people think of mule deer hunting and high country stuff versus, like, we have a base camp that we come back yep. to every day, sometimes multiple times no a day. No tents, no life straws. No, we're straight. Plenty of underwear. Yeah, showering, <laughs> drinking, grilling, yeah. having fun. We'll be fine. Yeah, we'll be fine. <laughs> Don't you worry about us. <laughs> Colton, we just left the camper five minutes ago. Yeah, a little Angel's Envy whiskey is the, the whiskey of, cho the the drink whis of choice. That's the drink of choice on I, the trip. I brought the tin cups for us this year again, mm -hmm. too. Yep, yep, that'll do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's the big gear, obviously. That's our biggest investment. Obviously, inside that, we've got sleeping bags and pillows and things like that that we're bringing with us. Yep. Um, we've got one big Yeti cooler. Yep, we've got a 110-quart Yeti cooler that we'll bring. We'll pack it full of food. So. Uh, yep. That's a good question. Where do you want to do our grocery stop? Would that be where we pick up the camper, roughly? Yep. yep. We'll pick up camper there. Um, we'll get groceries and we'll pack for ice. Yep. Which is Black Hills area. So there's two hours from our lease. Okay. So we'll stack with, with food and ice. Yep. And then um, we'll have to we'll do multiple ice trips. But that Yeti held pretty good last year. Um, eventually, that hopefully is getting pronghorn or deer meat in it. I wonder if. The freezer and the cooler has an ice maker. Probably not. No. Mm -mm. But that we could, will we could bring, dude. We could bring cubers. Yeah, I might, bet it might take a lot of cubes though. <laughs> a lot of cubes. I bet the um, mm. does it have a stand up fridge and freezer in there? In that Jacob? What do you mean by stand up? Like a bigger one? As far as I know. I mean that'll be nice because we can put our food in that versus in the cooler. Oh yeah. So that'll give Why us a lot more room. Sure. We did. We, we didn't. We didn't have. Bad. Yeah, we had a small thing. So we kept our meat in the yeah, cooler. Yeah, I bet it's pretty decent sized. So we have that Yeti that'll come with us. Um, and then we've got some pans and cooking uh, utensils. Yeah, so we basically have like a, we're packing everything in those yellow and black totes that you see mm -hmm. at Lowe's. Yep. Um, so we've got like a community tote that's mm -hmm. got all of our like camping equipment in it, like bug spray, sunscreen, yep. lanterns, uh, citronella candles, uh, tool kits, game bags, uh, processing stuff. We've got, this is important. We brought a, a small fold up white table. Yep. Um, really critical just for cooking. Yeah, the color is not important. I don't know no. why I said that. Yeah. <laughs> cooking, uh, prep of meals. And then also if we're successful butchering yeah. on that table Yeah, for deboning is really, and, Which, and caping. Yep. We've got game bags, obviously. Yep. Um, zip blocks to put Garbage the meat in. Bags, zip blocks, uh, lighters, fillet knives. We bought these large um, salt and pepper S and P S and P large twenty. I think they're twenty by sixteen by four waterproof, like extra large zip blocks that we're gonna put our hides in. Yeah, that was a good grab. They were cheap too, like ten bucks. Sweet. Um, but I think the goal there would be what treat it with hide lock. Right and then away. roll it up in there, put it in there, then put in a garbage bag, make sure basically no water touches that hide. Mm -hmm. Throw it into the cooler. 
Yeah, begs the question. I assume we won't treat it with hide lock until we get it, and and we're like, uh, till like we, back till at we the tape camp. it out. Yep. Yeah, so we'll actually bring the velvet lock with us and treat it in the field. Mm-hmm. Which also reminds me, like, don't let me do a skull cap or a skull mount. A European mount? Yeah, that was a pain in the dick. What do you mean? Last year. Oh, well, yeah. And then I gave it to a guy who let the Beatles well, eat the velvet. Why wouldn't you do that? Two reasons. One, it was just a pain to clean all the brains and stuff out of it. And then two, well, yeah. yeah, then the Beatles ate the velvet. We'll play it by ear. Just got to go mounts. I'm pretty sure I've done most of your European mounts. I did this one. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Yeah, we'll figure it out. Yep. <clears throat> so we got our community tote and bow cases. So we'll have two bow cases. Mm-hmm. Bringing a target with us. Just a little Reinhardt throw out deal. Something yeah, small. Yeah, just make sure everything's on, on par. Something small. Uh, sleeping bags mm-hmm. for the four of us. I did bring a hammock in case, dude. Sydney's might have a little couple trees. Yeah, well, hammock. Just for, nice. I don't know. I'm bringing it. Yep. We've got obviously all our clothes cleaned. Um, yep. So that'll be easy. no camo on this trip for me, anyways. Yeah, I've got. I'm gonna wear my predator stuff probably my long sleeve, just depending okay. on where I'm at. Um, and then or just a hunter shirt or something. I don't know. Yep. And then, yeah, I think for my cool pants. Me too. I need to find my gaiters. I don't know where those are. I also think I might be bringing those Rocky boots. I really like those if I can wear them. Okay. I'm bringing two pair of Keens. I'm going to bring a pair of my that area and then a, that pair. Okay. So my hikers and then that pair. Okay. I'm bringing flip-flops too. Yes. That's probably what I'm going to wear. The very same flip-flops I have here on my feet. Mm. That's what I'll wear probably for the whole road trip. And Yeah, I agree. Yeah, so cl- my clothes situation basically just looks like uh, Keens on the bottom, Snake Gators, light socks. I did pick up a pair of those Skinners. I think you did too. I have Skinners as Skinner, well. Skinner, uh, like stockings. It's the socks? most I will ever pay for socks. I've kind of hate myself. Yeah, for it, but yeah, they're just socks, like like athletic socks with uh, the bottoms been dipped in some kind of a rubbery, grip, mm-hmm. grippy stuff. So hopefully that'll keep us quiet for our socks. It will. Yeah, I, I wore. Just a uh, set of wool socks last year. And it worked good, but I could have gone for a little more protection. Well, and learning from experience, those cacti suck. Yeah. Yeah, you don't want that. You can't even see them, and they're just jabbing the shit out of you. Yep. So those skinners should work good. Um, moving up. Pants. We got underwear. Belt. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm rocking t-shirts. Most of the time, I am bringing some hoodies. We are bringing sunscreen. Uh, unscented sunscreen. sunscreen Ooh, and chapstick. chapstick. Speaking of that, yeah. yep. I ordered some more Burt's Bees. Went with a couple yeah. different flavors this year. Flavors? You know, I might have gotten medicated. Mm. Yeah. Do you know they have all these different kinds of Burt's Bees? I know. Bees? They have some. Yeah. So I, I went with the medicated. Mm-hmm. The real stuff. Hunter or Hoyt hat to top it off, probably. Yeah. I got a couple hats. Yep. A couple hats. Bino harness. Get your really nice binos. Well, I think that's a good point. So we talked about this in another, in another podcast. You know, last year we went out. What we're yeah. about to share with you is the secret to this killing is the mule secret. deer. Yeah. So uh, maybe even just big deer in general. I don't know. Yeah. Um, we had like a vortex spotting scope and like the windshield mount or Which the window I, mount and stuff. I just hate spotting scope. <clears throat> yeah. And it's nothing against that. It's just like, no, I, no. I just don't like <laughs> using them. Yeah. I just don't like the way they look or operate. And, like, even if you have, like, I've got high-quality Vortex ones that I carry for Kansas and whitetail hunting, but, like, we're literally looking at some of these deer at a mile plus. Um, Mm -hmm. And so it just doesn't work. And so Easy mile plus. So we've invested in these Canon um, (laughs) stabilized. Yeah, I think they just have, like, stabilized technology. Nikon makes a pair, too. There might be other companies that make them. We bought Canons. Ours are Canon, yeah. Yeah, and they were expensive, but, like, number one— you, they're great binoculars. Number two is that stabilization technology. You can see two miles and be like, yeah, that's a big buck. Yep. Well, it's, it replaces the need for like a, a spotting scope and mm-hmm. a tripod. And think about how long that stuff takes to get out of the packaging or the whatever mm-hmm. the case it's in. Set up your tripod, like get it locked in. These things like literally you throw them up in a truck and you, you can see as well as you would with... Um, yeah, in fact, I have mine in my bino harness. I've been shooting with them and pull them out, and they fit really? perfectly in my bino they harness. They do? Yeah. What kind of bino harness you got? Vortex one. Huh. Yeah. Is that the same one I have that they white-labeled from? Uh, it is. I'm pretty sure. Same one. Is it? Yeah. I mean, dude, mine fit. I mean, it's That's snug. Right. Vortex white-labeled that Alaska Guide creation. Yeah, it's it's snug, but, I mean, it they fit perfect. You're going to carry those with you? Yeah. So I could be like, 
Yep. That's the one. <laughs> and then kill him at five steps. Yep. Oh, I yep. see. Yep. That's the one. No. Oh, this one. Uh, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, well, yeah, go for it. I think so. I mean, <laughs> I, I'm going to bring my Vortex one. Did ones. I bring mine last year? Do you remember? I think we did. We used yours more than anything because I had my Vortex ones with me. Yeah, but I don't think I was like pulling them out that often. Well, what else were we using? My birth. I, oh, you have your my birth. Harness, yeah. And so I had my Vortex. That's probably what we use close up. Yeah, that's more that. That's fine. So we'll just put those in the truck. Yeah, those are truck spotters. Okay. Yeah, I mean, more power to you. You do whatever you mm -hmm. want, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, I guess I could put them in the backpack. We put them in your backpack. Hey, Colton, carry it. So when we got on some of those high points, we pulled them out of your backpack to glass from a high point. Did we? Yeah. We had you them sure? in your, 100%, we had them in your backpack. Why don't I remember that? Probably because I was using them. <laughs> like what high point? Like when we remember. When I was stalked that deer. The second time. You? And then we I came up and met you on the top. And then we walked the ridge the whole way out. That high point. We used them there? Yep. Did you use them while I was stalking that deer? No. Why not? I, it was 50 yards from me. <laughs> nah. -uh. Oh, you mean the, no, I had mine with me. Yeah. Yeah. That's when I belly crawled and lost my Vortex uh, range finder. Remember I lost the range finder out there this yeah. last year? Yeah. I got another one. Oh, so you kept quiet when I said something this morning when I was like, that's when people started doing well, stupid I don't, stuff with I don't, the range finder. I didn't throw it. I just lost it. Mm. That sucks. Yeah. I got a zip cord now. Good thing you'd, kill, you'd killed already. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Shit. Yeah, dude, there's a couple things you don't want to lose on a trip like this. Rangefinder, so. release. release. I see how <laughs> Yeah, I don't want to do that. Yeah. You're shooting fingers. Yeah, I might have to go through and make sure to tighten up all those bow. Make sure everything's tight up on the bow. <laughs> Are you not sure if everything's Well, now, after everybody? talking with Sean this morning, he's like, yeah, I like shot and my whole thing fell apart. Yeah. Trigger fell off. I'm he like, oh, my God, he's dude. He's shooting a bow tech. You'll be all right. Oh, <laughs> God, dude, you're killing me here. Now I feel like I got to go through and check everything. Yep. Um, so yeah, that's I those mean, optics are pretty important. So we we've got those in the truck binos. That mm -hmm. uh, yeah, let's just see. We're using Kuyu packs. We both well, have the same Kuyu dude, pack. Okay, why not? Because there's two of us now. Well, I'm gonna bring them. Well, dude, here's the I'll th put them in my pack. Here's the thing. Think about this. How if I had just had like one of the Coltons with me, mm -hmm. and when we killed my buck, how would we get it out of there? What do you mean? Like, because it took both of us to pack it out. Mm-hmm. They don't have the same packs that we have. They're going to have packs, but yeah, not we're full same. of camera gear. Yeah. How are we going to do that? I don't know. <laughs> Tie a rope around it, put it around his neck. Can I, I fit know. a whole deer in one of those packs? No fucking way. Really? Mm -mm. I mean, we we were stuffed, the two of us, especially if you've got a head, unless they're carrying it, which that's not going to work because you're going to want it all wrapped up nice. Hmm. <laughs> Well, I mean, assume if you kill, like, we come. We come find you guys. <laughs> I'm coming. <laughs> right? Yeah. I hopefully on the rogues <laughs> so I can get to you. I guess we'll just play it by ear, yeah. yeah. I mean, worst case scenario would we'll leave some meat temporarily to go back and get. My only fear is that we are, like, deep, like, balls deep with the rogue and, like, blow a tire, of which I'm just going to put one behind its ear and leave it in the field. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully. I wonder if we can divvy up that patch kit and just keep, mm -hmm. keep some with each of the bikes. Yeah, but what about like pumping it back up? <laughs> I don't know if you're. Yeah. How hard can you blow cold? Yeah. <laughs> Best get to second. <laughs> yeah, that's like a. What, <laughs> what needs second? Let me see what's in my Kuyu pack. Uh, a, a full size bike air pump. Yeah. Mm, can we? Yeah. Small. Uh, I have a small one. Yeah, maybe something like that. I don't know if I can get it. Like, you still need that cord to like get in there. Mine isn't. It's like a base basketball one. Yeah, I suppose we just leave it then. <laughs> yeah, leave her where she lies. Yeah. She's, you did good, you girl. Did good. You did good, girl. Uh, I mean, I won't hesitate to ride it out on a flat tire. Yeah, me either. As long as I can get her out. Of, I'm sure shit not pushing that bitch. No. Mm -mm. But that would be nice, man, if you had a full backpack full of meat and be able to ride her out on that. That's a little dangerous. Oh, you can get it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that would be sweet. Sweet. Mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to think of anything else on our gear list that we overlooked. We got basically our camp stuff, our, I mean, obviously like toiletries and mm -hmm. stuff. Each of us are going to bring. I probably will bring one cellular trail camera. Maybe throw up somewhere. Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah, why not? Um, if we've got access to that wheat field rate in that money spot. Yeah, we'll why not? Up. I've got, um, 
as far as cape cape and stuff i, mm-hmm. I brought my havlon i have a bunch of replacement blades that i brought good I've got two fillet knives. I think it's the same ones you brought last year. Those are already packed away. Cool. I have a knife sharpener. Yep. Um, we have zip blocks. I mean, that should be everything we need to process the entire. Yeah, animal. I'll bring some processing stuff too. But yeah, that should be good. Yep. Cape. It's kind of it. We. Oh, wa- I want to make sure we walkies. don't forget those walkies. Yeah, I got to Don't forget those walkies. Walkies and saws are on me. How did those things die last year? And um, how do we prevent that from happening? We there's a charger base for them. Um, secondary question. Is two going to cut it? I think I only have two with me. I think the other two are at the cabin. Question remains. Yeah, I mean. Is two, two going to cut it? It just should be for the the gu- like the like hunter. Hunter to spotter. Yeah, but if we break up. Well, you're not going to. One of them will hang back. No. You're going to want them over your shoulder. You're going to. Not if they have a good angle. You think? And yeah. just go pro it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, if they can see the deer and us, that's better. Uh, I'm sure I could get them on Amazon right now. I, I've seen them at stores and stuff, too. I mean, whatever you think is faster. But, yeah, it might not hurt to have one for everybody. Do you want pink, Colty? He says, yeah. Okay, here's a four-banger. I don't know what the difference is. Anyways, we can keep going. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's it. I think we're I think we're in pretty good shape. I think some some successful uh, landowner connections on the way out there is going to be critical. I think gear wise we're we're in great shape, and uh, uh, I yeah. am pretty optimistic. The weather looks great. They've gotten some good rain out there since, which is putting the fire uh, concern a, a little bit at bay. Yes. I I couldn't see anything going bad. No. <laughs> I can't see anything going bad. Um other than the fact that like COVID seems to be like closing its grips around some of these like places. <laughs> but that's just more at home like I hope just everything's fine while we're away. Yeah, I mean I, I, again I think we'll be kind of out in the middle of nothing. So well, I'm not worried fine. about us. Oh. Yeah, just stuff, you know, in general. family and business we're leaving behind for for a bit. Yeah, I no, I think we'll be um I think we'll be okay. Oof. We may have to pick some up. It doesn't look like I can get them quick enough. Okay. Um What do you think about that? I mean I mean four would be I mean don't you think op- don't you think if optimist. if if like either of these guys have a good angle on that deer, I think that third angle is probably Yeah, I just better. I don't wanna necessarily miss the like close up over the shoulder, but I guess you're going to use your GoPro on you and stuff, right? <laughs> well, yeah, and I think that that over the shoulder is pro- potentially more difficult to get. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, that makes sense. So uh, I guess if you're, and this is in the case of us splitting up and only mm-hmm. being two. well, so let's yeah, let's literally think about like the so the first one, the first one that you stalked. We probably, I mean, if it was just you and a cameraman, the cameraman would have had to have been behind you because there was no third angle. Mm-hmm. He'd have been over your shoulder. Mm-hmm. Um, on the buck that you killed, he would have had to have been over your shoulder. It would have been me. I would have had to sneak up with you mm-hmm. and film that. On my first Which stock. Which would have been tough. On my first stock, I would have probably said, stay. And that might have been the wrong decision because he ended up moving. Mm-hmm. But I don't, I don't know. See, see, but then from there, that's tough. Because, I mean, you run the risk of if you tell them to stay, they get up and move and it doesn't happen that yeah, way. Or, which we, and, we know can happen. Yeah, and then what if they, like, what if you communicate with Colton and he's like, yeah, man, I can't see him anymore. And you're like, he's at 20 yards. Then what do you do? Wait? No, I'll shoot him. Shoot him, and <laughs> you just have to film me shoot him from, from a distance. Yeah, so I mean that's risky. It's it's risky to have him stay behind. Mm-hmm. But I think you only do that if you're pretty confident that he's going to stay there, and you're going to be able to shoot him there. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of it's probably going to be right over the shoulder. Yeah, even on a split up, is you're going to be moving as one over the shoulder. Yeah, 
Yeah, probably. For a lot of that still hunting situation, it's for sure over the shoulder. Mm-hmm. Okay. Unless somehow you stumble upon one and you're like, oh, dude, he's right here. Like, there's a great angle. F- just get over to that ridge and you should be able to see us. I got some. They should be here by Monday. Okay. They should be good. With the earpiece? Yep. Okay. So we'll just have to charge them. <laughs> All right, dude. I think we're I think about, that's it, huh? about as ready as we're going to get. Now I just got to hope these next three days fly by. <laughs> Yeah, I I gotta finish packing as well. Um, that um, lens is like rejected or something. We have to look at that. Uh oh. Yeah. What do you mean rejected? <laughs> I don't know. Just got, sent me a message. I have to call them. Okay. I don't know. Um, yeah. So I mean it. it I think that we have everything we need. The camera aspect will be a big one for us this year that we didn't have last year. Mm-hmm. You know, and and it also being four of us, not two of us, that we're switching back and forth and hunting. So, yep. Um, yeah, I don't know, man. It's uh, hopefully if people are looking or listening to this, they're laughing because they're like, "Yeah, you guys cleaned up." I hope so. You know? That's where I'll be. <laughs> I hope so. Yeah, <laughs> I hope so. I'm optimistic. That's yeah. Yeah. All, you, all you can do. We're going to have fun either way. I'm not Yeah, gonna, it'll I'm not be a blast, work. man. I mean, I know we've kind of made it sound like, you know, uh, it sounds really optimistic, but, you know, we've put in the effort and and definitely have prepped ourselves as best as possible. Now just got to make it happen. It's all so. that's left. All right. Well, we appreciate you listening to this episode of the Hunter Podcast. Hopefully, if we have not posted all of our tags being full on Instagram by right now, we got one more day to do it, so wish us luck. And we will catch you guys back next week and hopefully fill you in on our return. Later.